Hey guys, welcome to prompt number 134. If you're new to this series or my channel, this is a weekly series I do where I have this book that I bought. It has words printed in it and I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to make a drawing based off of those words. So let's get into it. Well, let's see what we got. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. I just realized I took the markers off of this one prematurely. Um, hi, welcome to my channel where I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna put a piece of paper over that for now and I will block that again later. <laughs> Whoops, we have one prompt. Time machine. <laughs> if only I had a time machine to go back and undo that goof. All right, <laughs> let's get to sketching. And hello to sick voice Casey and low energy. I recorded this intro uh, about a week ago and then I went to Toronto where Toronto got me sick and I have been dying for the past week. So basically this video has been one disaster after another, but that's fine. Let's just talk about the prompt. So when I think time machine, I usually just think about going into the past. I guess you could go into the future with a time machine, but I always like to go in the past because dinosaurs are really fun. If I could go into the past or the future, I would definitely go back and look at those dinosaurs because they're all dead and I want to see them. Besides, in the future, uh, Earth could not exist and it could be on fire, so that doesn't really sound very appealing to me. But I guess also if I don't time my backwards time right, I could go back when the world's on fire when the dinosaurs are dying, but I would not do that. Wow, what am I talking about? So I drew a variety of different time machines and they all revolve around dinosaurs, but I did want to focus on maybe the design of the time machine because what is a time machine? For some reason I think about a spaceship, but that's not necessarily correct. It could just be a chair or just like a tube you go into or just like a little room or I don't even know. What is a time machine? It doesn't exist. It's something I gotta make up. In the end, I thought the little sketch on the bottom left was the most fun. It was someone who had time machined to where the dinosaurs were and they were surrounded by dinosaurs and they were scared. I thought it was a cute little scene and I was already thinking about working with gouache and I was excited, so I got into it. So yeah, like I said, I was just really wanting to do something a little different for this prompt. I wanted to work a little larger scale, which originally I had whipped out like an 11 by 14 piece of paper, but decided that that was probably a little too big for the simple illustration that I was going to work on. So I decided to work eight by 10. I also wanted to have a white border because I thought that would be really fun, which later I regretted not breaking that border because that's a very classic Casey move. Am I allowed to use the excuse that I was sick so I wasn't thinking straight for this prompt? I feel like I would definitely have made the same stupid mistakes if I weren't sick. This prompt was kind of all over the place. I don't use gouache often. In fact, I think the last time I touched my gouache was the Different Mediums Makes Different Styles video. It's the video where I used watercolor, gouache, digital, Posca pens, maybe something else? I don't quite remember, but I used different mediums to show that my style changed with each one and I used gouache then and that video was many, many, many months. I even want to say it was last year and I haven't used gouache since. It's something that I feel like I would love because it's something I can use a lineless style with, but because I don't practice with that medium, I don't have a great handle with it. So every time I use it, I donk it up. And as you can see, it's been so long since I've used it that my white gouache has dried up into this glumpy, clumpity clump that I had to cut out of the tube. It was quite a situation. But luckily, because gouache is basically just a really thick, opaque watercolor, I was able to just add water to it and work with it. So because it had been absolutely so long since I had worked with gouache, I forgot just how dark it dried in comparison to the wet color that you mix. So I was mixing all of these colors thinking, oh, look how light this is. I mean, look how light that blue on my palette is compared to the lightest blue on the paper. It dried so much darker than it looked wet and I forgot that was a thing and it was a constant struggle through 
throughout this whole piece and it just really messed with my ability to mix anything. Also, speaking of the ability to mix anything, because I am so used to watercolor and I did talk about this in a oil painting video I think recently, I'm not used to mixing white into things so I just get all screwed up when thinking about having to add just a little bit of color to white and then it being really hard to add white to already colored things. So that was a constant struggle as well. But I learned a lot as usual, as I do when I work with things that I'm not used to. I do want to get used to gouache, but at the moment I'm going through quite an acrylic phase. So I feel like instead of practicing my gouache, wow, do I want to work with acrylic. And I have been doing a lot of acrylic abstract pieces on my own free time. Definitely learning a lot about acrylic. I'm having so much fun just kind of letting loose and doing whatever. Why am I talking about this? Let's talk about the prompt. So going into this piece, I knew it was going to be a bit on the simple side because I mean, that's my style. I, I work with a simple style and I'm not ever looking to do anything super detailed, but the sketch that I had and the image I had in my mind was so much different than what this piece turned out to be. I, I feel quite disappointed with it. I don't hate it. <laughs> it's just not what I was going for. It's much more simple than what I was going for and in the end it looks like something I could have easily done with Posca pens instead of using gouache. I feel like I didn't use gouache in a way that really used gouache to its fullest ability. I really used it in a flat way, which gouache is a type of watercolor, so I should have been able to make gradients and stuff, but I was so scared and felt so out of my comfort zone that I kind of defaulted to as simple as a painted style as possible, which created a illustration that I wasn't quite going for. Because, I feel like I've said this sentence a hundred times, because gouache is a watercolor, it reactivates when you add water to it. So it was really hard for me to layer things. I feel like when I layer watercolor on top of watercolor, it doesn't quite activate as quickly, so I have a much easier time putting colors on top of each other. But when it came to the gouache, as soon as I put a color on top of another color, it just reactivated immediately and the colors were blending and it was more of a struggle than I anticipated and wanted to deal with. With at the moment. I already have very low patience just as a person in general, but when I'm sick, I just can't deal with anything. And I just wasn't in the mood for this, but I wanted to do it and I don't like to give up. You can especially see the struggle I had with the colors reactivating with the fog in the background. I was hoping to get this really cool fog effect in the background to show that the mountains were maybe in the distance and covered by fog or clouds or something, but it was just reactivating the mountains in the background and it just doesn't look good. It looks kind of silly, but you know what? Art is trial and error and my gosh, did I not try. <laughs> Originally when I made this piece, I was hoping for a lineless style, but because I was having such a struggle mixing the dark and light colors, everything kind of blended together in this medium tone and it didn't look great separating itself with a lineless style. So I decided it was probably best if I went through and lined everything with a really dark blue gouache. I thought it would be more fun than a black. So I did line everything in the foreground and I left the mountains unlined because I thought that would be more fun and they look separate enough. As well as the pterodactyls in the background, they're just so cute. I love those little guys in the background just floating around with their tiny little eyes. And that's it. I feel like I really let the time machine prompt down with this one, but I guess that's what happens when you try to get yourself out of your comfort zone and try something new, which I don't regret. But I do always feel sad when I don't love my illustration. But that's all right, right? That's art. All right, guys, I'll see you on the end card. Last week's prompts were quite an interesting mix. We had goldfish, puppet, jetpack, and salt and pepper shakers. I loved how many of you included Sock Casey as your puppet. It tickled me, what can I say? So our first featured artist is, oh gosh, Mylisabuar? Again, I'm sorry. I loved how angular your style is in this one and I will admit I'm a little weak to the blue and orange colors. That fish is just so goofy. The cat is fun. I just love this piece. It's energetic. It's silly. I love your style. I loved it. 
And our next featured artist, Akako98, who had this really fun and stylized, I just love it. This illustration is just so much fun, which I'm actually just realizing it's another cat wearing a jetpack. I guess that's my weakness. But this one is just so fun as well. I love the stylization. I love the colors, the looseness, that sad little fish. He's boiling in his own home. That is so sad, but the illustration is so fun. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining in. I can't wait to see the variety of illustrations you guys make with Time Machine. And I'll see you in the next one. Stay golden. Bye.